It's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to VR. We are back in the How It Works series. This is episode two, part two. And um, today we are looking once again on uh, grab objects. We're going to ignore everything in this little area here for now and hop over to another special place. Place where we can shoot something. Yes, we have guns in this video and we also have the gravity gloves. Yay! Um, now, we're going to continue on from the last video, so if you haven't had a look at the last video to yet, uh, have a look at that first, uh, because that one describes a few things that we're going to base some of the changes off here as well. Uh, so, let's have a look very quickly, let's get over to where I want to go. Uh, now, one thing very quickly I, uh, I did notice is if we just push our hands through here, you can see that uh, there is no uh, no enemy over here or anything. There's no head crab or anything. There's just that uh, that dude over there, which is of course unusual since if we open this door over here and pop back up here, you can see nothing there. Even if we pop our head into there, nothing there. However, now we uh, suddenly have this dude. <laughs> so yeah. You can see exactly when that loading point happens. It actually happens right as you come around the corner. He gets loaded in. Uh, so that way you don't have a chance to actually see him accidentally when you pop through here. Uh, now before we start, we're going to take this guy and drop him over there so we don't have to look at his ugly face. Um, let's start with something that we actually mentioned in the last video. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to grab that thing and put it in this pocket. That's quite important. We'll have a look at that very soon. Uh, but right now, guns. How do guns work? Well, in the last video, I mentioned and showed how when you hold a physics object, or when you're not holding a physics object and you're moving, uh, your hand does this intelligent thing where it traces from your head to the uh, objects in front of you and positions itself there. It doesn't apply to physics objects, so as a result, physics objects don't end up on the front of the object that you're hitting and they just have you they have actual physics that sort of forces them to get uh, to get delayed and pushed about that however doesn't happen on guns you can see here obviously this is what a gun would do if you pushed it into a wall however when i'm moving with the fake movement you can see it doesn't actually do that it does what the hand does so how is that happening well it's uh, it's very simple really that is not a separate physics object. That is the hand. <laughs> That's uh, kind of the simple way that I would do it anyway. Uh, now, once again, disclaimer, I uh, don't know any of the actual behind the scenes of any of these uh, any of these things. I just uh, study games pretty, pretty much from the moment I start playing them. And uh, that's how I, I kind of judge what I believe is happening most of the time. Right. So, yeah, what's happening here is... This is basically just replacing your hand. When you're holding a gun, your hand can't really do anything other than hold the gun at that point. So it's not able to do any of the gravity glove stuff, as you can see. Nothing. With this hand, yeah. Not with this hand, right? And it also, of course, can't grab things. So here, using my grip, you can hear it in my hand. Absolutely does not grab objects. So all they do, basically, is just change the shape of your actual physics hand. Remember, the physics hand isn't the one that you're seeing, right? Because if I'm holding something, and then I can, I, I, I sort of stop that thing there. Uh, ooh, that's not very useful to do it there. Um, not that. One of those boxes once again, right? Remember, if I'm holding something like this, I still have a physics hand which is completely separate, which allows me to push things about, right? Uh, so that visual hand is not what you're actually, it's not where the actual physics is. And the same thing applies here. And uh, in fact, this is actually a little bit offset from where the hand really is in reality. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it if I... Yeah, you can see it if I pause the game as well. So here we go. I uh, need to keep uh, moving my headset down. I keep forgetting that the camera on screen is a little bit stupidly positioned. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So when we pause the game, you can see that my actual hand is not in the right place. And you can actually see that from something else as well. Here... When I hold my uh, my teleport line, you can see it comes from the center of my palm, here, in between these two fingers, 
right? It comes from the center of my palm. There we go. But when I have a gun out, you can see that the teleport line no longer comes from the center of my palm, but rather a sort of lower area, right? And that's just, it, it's just an offset entirely designed for the gun to be positioned in what feels comfortable. You'll notice that's actually a very uh, common theme here with what we're talking about today, which is how the game decides how to deal with physics objects. And it's very important to understand that a lot of this, pretty much everything in this game, is design decision. Nothing's left to chance, or at least most of the things are not left to chance. And we're going to really show that here by taking all of these random objects off this table, including that radio, just because I want to, right? And we're going to separate this thing from its computer, right? Oh, that was a very frustrating thing I just did. Right, there we go. Um, what I'm going to have to do... It doesn't matter. We're going to move this computer over here and... Nope, can't grab it with two hands. There we go. Right, get this out of the way. Now, what I'm going to say here is weight. How does weight... Uh, how is weight handled in this game? As you know, I mentioned in the last video that some objects allow me to hold them with two hands. However, if I hold them with one hand, the game just detaches me automatically. Let me put that back there. I don't want to see your ugly face yet. And um, yeah, so the thing with some of these objects is some of them are too heavy to lift with one hand. As you can see, that's the case with this monitor. I try and pick it up, it just drops, right? And you can see my grips are still held. There we go. And of course, when I hold it with two hands, I can lift it, right? Because this object is nice and heavy and too heavy for me to lift with one hand. This object is too heavy for me to lift at all. So I can't lift it with one hand. As you know, it's really weird how it's actually offsetting. Um, I also can't lift it with two hands, as you can see, right? But that's actually not true. It's not based on weight. That's the thing. What I found is that it's, it's actually not based on weight for any object, not just these specific ones, but nothing at all. And uh, we can show that by giving this thing a little bit of uh, a, a, a punch. Let's do that, shall we? There we go. Beautiful. And now you can see, firstly, I can distance grab it. Secondly, I can grab it with one hand. That is some heavy glass right there. <laughs> yeah. So I just have to punch it and break it. And this applies to pretty much any object that can be broken. If you can't lift it, if it's too heavy. It, there's some radios early on in the game as well, which you, can, you can't pick them up with one hand, uh, but you just have to punch them, break them, and now suddenly you can. So here we go. This object I couldn't pick up with one hand, and now I can. I can pick it up with one hand because I broke it. This object I couldn't pick up at all, not even with two hands. So what I like to do here is place these objects together and you'll see something almost straight away, which is, let me just uh, do a fake stand-up there, a non-fake stand-up, sorry. And now you can see with one hand, not with two, so my other hand is here, with one hand, I'm able to not only pick up the object that I couldn't pick up with one hand, but also the object that I couldn't pick up with either hand, like even with two hands, at the same time. Completely nothing to do with weight. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to highlight here. Nothing in the game cares about actual physics, right? And that's intentional. It's very, very intentional. You have to bear in mind and understand that, right? It's very intentional to not do things based entirely on physics. Because if you did that, some things would feel a little bit weird because of the tracking displacement where you sort of move something and, and the objects just sort of have this uh, have have too much weight to them even though that's kind of necessary because some objects will need too much weight in order to prevent you from lifting them like these guys let's have a look at ragdolls for a moment right they're too heavy to lift at all or at least the game wants to sort of kind of make you believe that of course everyone knows that that's not the case with these guys they are actually prevented from moving right so as you can see here when we try and grab a ragdoll we can't lift him, right? And you can see with my teleport line, I'm trying to move my hand up. Cannot lift him, right? Oop, I teleported. Uh, but what happens is, is that it actually creates a joint. 
So this joint here is being created when I grab it. The thing about it is when I grab it is of course is of course a uh, is something that I can do multiple times with these objects, right? So I can grab it with one hand and then I can grab it with another hand. So this joint that prevents me from actually lifting this character is actually being generated every time I grab it, even if the object wasn't on the floor. So even though I can't lift this guy, I can very easily keep moving and keep grabbing and re-grabbing and suddenly he's just sort of hovering in air. Watch this. I'm holding him with one with his foot and his joint now, which prevents me from moving him around, is actually there hovering him about. So I'm able to just sort of pick him up with a leg and make him nice and fly, right? And the other thing you'll notice is he seems a little bit light. Again, it's intentional design. The game doesn't really bother with the physics. It doesn't want to. It's intentional. That's the point. It just wants you to feel like everything feels quite right. Right? And that's why it's very easy for me, even though I can't actually lift these things with one hand. Look. There we go. It releases as soon as it's off the ground. Even though I can't lift them with one hand, I can do this. Right? Grab. I can throw them really easily with one hand because they're not actually that heavy. They're to they, they are designed to release based on whether you've got, you're using one hand, using two hands. And that works the other way around as well. Some objects like uh, that thing, for example, can't hold it with one hand. Uh, you, can, you can't hold it with two hands. You can only hold it with one hand, right? Even though technically, you know, those two grab points don't interfere with each other. I can grab it, but I cannot grab it with two hands. Again, the game decides that based on, it's purely based on design, right? Nothing is ever too heavy for you to pick up because that would feel really weird. And you can tell when you start filling things into, an, into a container like this, for example, right? That that is the case. So if you were to put like, for example, that, and then you put this into there as well, put that underneath, put that on there as well, and then you put this phone in there and whatever, then suddenly this object becomes much more laggy to lift. And it doesn't feel as good um, for what they wanted it to, to, to feel like in the end. Now there's actually something other, something else that's really unusual about these things, right? Uh, we're going to use this one. We'll try and do this. It's, it's a very much a chance thing. Uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So there we go, right? Um, and what's happened here is something very unusual. You can see that my hand is actually flipping up and down while I'm holding the object. And I'll explain that very easily, right? So what's happening is this draw is actually the same physics object type as the draws that actually end up in an actual cabinet. The ones that are locked in place. The ones that you can't move, and if you move too far away, they just detach. Oh, oh. Uh, or at least sometimes they detach. <laughs> You'll notice my hand jumped over from there. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. So these objects are the same type of physics object. And you can see on their handles, they have this soft motion. Once again, I'd like to remind you of the last video where I showed how the visual hand is not actually where your physics hand is. Which means the visual hand can do all of these extra special things in order to look much better than uh, than just a static joint, right? Uh, and of course, on these other corners of the object where you hold it, that doesn't happen. The, the visual hand just stays in one spot and there's no soft motion. On the handle, however, there's this nice soft motion. And of course, the game doesn't really care whether you flip your hand around. Uh, it just sort of lets you do that instantly uh, rather than rather than making you dis detach and reattach to the handle. It just sort of does this. This is entirely animated right here, right? So you can see it's a soft position. The same thing's actually happening here. And you can see that my hand is able to very, very easily like softly mo move around on this handle. There's actually a proper grab handle on here. That's a proper physics handle, but 
it's uh, it's sometimes being ignored. Sometimes the game sort of accidentally uses the thing that shouldn't is shouldn't happen, which is this this type of grab handle, right? And uh, as a result, you have this sort of weird grab point. And you can actually see there's something extra weird about it, which is the way that that grab point is actually oriented. Right now, my hands are both facing each other, right? So this, my, my right hand palm is actually in this way, right? Let me just show you. Watch this when I pause the game, right? So this is what I'm actually doing right now. Oop, I forgot about that. Right now, this is what I'm actually doing, right? Watch what, how it's positioned. You see that? So the grab point is actually oriented wrongly as well. It's actually not wrong, it's just grabbing the wrong type of grab point. There's another thing you'll notice, which is how there's an excess lag when I move around using the fake motion. Again, that's because this is not physics. This motion here is not physics. Whereas this one here is actually not tracking that because it's not supposed to. You see, when I move around using this, it stays attached to the physics object. It's not supposed to follow my tracking as I move. It's supposed to move with the object, which is what it's doing here, except that object is not supposed to be fake moving with me. So that object is fake moving with me, like my hands do, which is what allows me to very quickly do it. However, when I do the crouch thing, you can see it stays in position correctly, right? It's only because of the fake movement that it doesn't know what to do, because that grab point's never supposed to happen. And you can see if I grab it normally, it does actually have a proper grab point where it doesn't have that soft motion on it. There is something unusual though you'll probably have noticed, which you might not have noticed, but you might have, which is this. As I grab an object, you can see that my wrist pocket is rotating to keep the object in there oriented correctly, right? So as I turn my hand, you can see this object gets oriented so that it always faces me vertically. Right? No matter how I look, no matter how much my hand rotates. The same thing applies when I'm holding an object, as you can see. However, there's something really funny. Because once again, that wrist pocket is not based on the visual hand. It's actually based on the physics hand. Which means if I grab this, oh, no, doesn't work with those. Uh, I need something that I can grab with two hands. Not that. Oh, a box. Wonderful. So here we go. As you can see, I rotate my hand and it keeps itself cor correctly oriented so that it's always vertical according to my head tracking. Well, according to the world, right? But facing me, because I can turn my head and of course it doesn't turn with me. However, it's not based on the visual hand, because if I force my hand to rotate, it's actually based on my physics hand. So here we go. I'm going to try and lock this object in place and you can see me rotating that wrist pocket based on my physics hand. So what's actually happening here is the object is parented to this to this visual hand. So it's directly affected, its rotation is directly affected by this visual hand. However, it then locally offsets that based on which way my tracking is facing, which is actually my, my physics hand. So it rotates that locally, but it doesn't know that obviously this object is not actually rotating that much. So it's offsetting locally when it doesn't need to. As a result, when I tilt my hand right, it offsets left. If I tilt my hand left, it offsets right. In reality, that would work in a normal situation. I, I turn my hand right, it offsets left, right? That makes sense. But because I'm preventing the hand from visually doing that, it does that and it would be correct if I let go. So just another unusual thing about the wrist pockets. Well, there's more to come. Because if we throw these things out of the way, in fact, we could just use these drawers. It's always very easy to use these drawers. Uh, we need that there clipboard. This clipboard's really cool because we can get it stuck, right? Throw it in here. And then what we can do is put our physics hand outside, right? So you can see here now I've got a wrist pocket here, except I don't, right? Because let's let's uh, let's let's position this nice and easily. Here we go, and you can see that my wrist pocket doesn't seem to work. That's because my physics hand is actually over here. So if I put my hand now behind my actual wrist, da -da -da -da, you can see that the wrist pocket, while it visually stays on my animated hand, 
is actually calculated based on my physics hand. So here we go, I can just move the physics hand anywhere. And it detaches because there's a distance limit on how much we can grab these things, right? So there you go. You could see that the actual wrist pocket is also not based on the visual hand. The functionality of the wrist pocket is actually based on this physics hand, right? So I can take it out and I can put it in. You see that? Very cool because it's always based on the physics hand. The physics hand is sort of treated like tracking in most cases. That kind of covers most of the grab systems. We also have one fun thing, which is when we actually do a pull, what we can do is accidentally, the game doesn't really uh, realize that I've released the grip because there's actually some certain frames where the game doesn't check for my grip. As a result, I'm not actually pressing the grip button right now. So I'm, I'm gonna hang this I'm going to hang this controller, or in fact, I'm just going to place the controller on my laptop right now. There we go. Place the controller on my laptop. And you can see my hand is not... There we go. It released it. It eventually releases it. <laughs> but yeah, it's very cool. I can just sort of do that. And there we go. I can just hold the object, even though I'm not holding the grip button, right? So there's a little bit of a weirdness going on. That's because there's a momentary time where these objects are not actually are not actually running the grab system. They kind of don't care very much. And what's cool is that there's more to it than that. There's an animated portion of that where it also applies forces. So what you can do is you can actually do a pull and then rotate your hand and it applies that rotational force which is really cool. Let's look a little bit more into how the grab pull actually works. So we are supposed to do this. We're supposed to point our hand towards a thing, target it by using either my uh, grip or trigger, index trigger, and then pull, right, with our hands. Well, actually, you don't really need to do that. You see, what happens is the game doesn't care about the direction of your velocity. It just cares about the velocity, right, the actual speed. So instead of doing this and pulling our hand up, what we could do is pull our hand down or we can pull our hand right or we can pull our hand left or even we can push our hand forward. It doesn't care about the rest of that. It doesn't care about direction. It cares about the speed at which you're moving your hand in any direction, right? And again, that's a really brilliant accessibility feature because even though it feels really good, Everyone's sort of talking about how, oh, this feels really amazing. It, it seems to always work. Yeah, well, it's actually very simple, guys. Check this out. It just does based on your hand, your hand speed. It doesn't care what direction you're going. It doesn't care what you actually do with your hand. And the same thing applies to something else as well. There are other things which require you to, to perform a hand gesture to actually do a, a nice uh, motion on them. And they do exactly the same thing. You see? I can't just move my hand right or left. It doesn't care whether I go up or down or left or right. You see that? It's all not based on the actual direction of my movement but rather just the speed of it. We've got one more thing to have a look at and then hopefully end this video because it's probably even longer than the first one. That's okay, it's all fine. And that thing that we're gonna look at now sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't. It's likely to happen the first time you grab an object. So it happened, it happened. Let's have a look at this suitcase. How am I grabbing it like this? Well, the answer is I'm not, you see? The actual physics point that I'm grabbing it at is here, right? Again, you can see where my tracking is because nothing's stopping the object from being pulled around. If I pulled it, then the tracking would be separated, right? Because that's actually a physics hand. What's happening here is for some reason, I nearly jumped into those things. That's not very good. For some reason, the game is moving the object based, uh, positioning my visual hand, right? in a different place. And I believe what's happening is that the game just simply doesn't know 
but doesn't always have the right code for when dealing with ragdoll objects like this. So this is a jointed object, this is a ragdoll object. The same thing sometimes applies to any ragdoll object, right? And what's happening, it just seems to have calculated the wrong offset. Even though the grab physics is actually gone to the correct offset, the visual hand simply hasn't. Again, that wrist pocket is not there, but rather on my physics hand, right? Which of course can be moved out of the way as well. If I got this stuck somewhere without breaking my controllers, then it would be really cool. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. As you can see, you can, you can distance grab objects. <laughs> this needs to be emptied. There we go. You can distance grab objects that aren't ragdolls. However, the ones that are, you can't distance grab them. Can you see this same box over there? It's because it's a ragdoll. You can see it's got all these jointed pieces, right? All these folds and stuff. There's actually something completely different between these two. Not just the fact that it's a ragdoll, but one of them seems to be on a very weird physics layer. It has different collisions. Watch this. This one goes through my head and the game doesn't care when my head's inside it. This one, it actually, you can hear it hitting my head, right? It actually collides with my head and the game hides, hides my vision while I'm inside it. It's, it's, it's very unusual. There's so many physics objects in here where because they're jointed, because they're ragdoll, firstly, I can't pull grab them, right? Even though they're the same box. And sometimes, as soon as I grab them, the offset will be weird. I bet you if I grab that suitcase now, for some reason, the offset will be fine, right? It just sometimes does it and sometimes doesn't. I don't know. The game just doesn't seem to like ragdolls or, or jointed physics objects for some reason, which is very unusual. Anyways, I'm probably, probably going to leave this video here. Again, you can see that there's a ragdoll object there because I can't pull grab it. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the video here. I'm sorry if it took a little bit of rambling here, there and everywhere. Once again, I always do that. Uh, now, uh, once again, I have, um, I have begun recreating the mechanics for this next video as well. So I have already done the, the physics hands and the sort of tracking fakery thing here and replicated that based on these, uh, based on the things that I've said in this video. And uh, I'll be showing that in the next video, hopefully. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I know it's been a long one. Goodbye.